This is the Final Whistle Podcast from the Wrexham AFC media team. The final score, Wrexham nil, Dover Athletic won a real blow to Wrexham on a day when the Solvent Norian played each other of course and maybe it was a chance to make up but Dover have improved massively since Andy Hessenthal took over they're now unbeaten well that's a big about and they've lost one in nine they went full time in Hessenthal took over and they look an extremely well drilled outfit who uh, <laughs> certainly did a number on Wrexham two games in a row that Wrexham have come against a side that's defended narrow and packed their own half and they've struggled to break through them and you can totally understand that to be fair Dover were disciplined they were hard to play against um, but frustrating for Exum because this time they did make some chances didn't go their way there's a big refereeing call that went against them as well and then a, a terrific late goal by the outstanding player on the pitch Anthony Jeffrey who came on a half time for Dover was what settled the match two changes for the Exum side Luke Young and Kevin Roberts coming in Mark Carrington and Keel Wright making way and well the first half was just horrible to watch in all honesty Wrexham worked ever so hard Dover played with the diamond in midfield smothered everything and it was it was pretty grim uh, fair in all honesty there were some half chances Rutherford making a, a good run in from the right flank to pop up in the hole and find in a little bit of space he drove a shot from 25 yards went comfortably wide of the left hand post then Summerfield swinging in a free kick Lawler climbing well six yards out getting over his man but couldn't control his header fully it dropped wide of the right post Luke Young switching the ball out to the flank Grant cutting in from the right hand side an impossible angle but he went for the shot and the keeper blocked it with his chest and in, as the half was drawn to a close a couple of a late chances again Grant not quite making the right decision an excellent break by Bevan down the rouse when he fed Grant in I think he was distracted by a good run outside him by Summerfield and was caught in two minds whether to hit it or not and as a result miscontrolled it he should have had a go on the edge of the D because it was a rare moment when Wrexham had a bit of space in the attacking third and in added time one last opportunity it was Rutherford doing tremendously well on the left hand side with a crevel little back heel through an opponent's legs to pick out Jennings on the overlap he ripped in across to the far post it was missed by DeBio the left back and Grant not expecting it to come through him just couldn't get a proper control on it eight yards out it bounced away from him and the keeper beat him to it as he chased a loose ball so a uh, a pretty grim first half in all honesty very few chances very little quality because Dover was so superbly organised what happened at half time was decisive and a little surprising in all honesty well firstly the unsurprising part Jeffrey brought on on the left hand side he would be the decisive player of course but also and huge credit to the Dover manager Andy Hessenthaler very bold tactical decisions I gotta say I assumed that was what Dover was setting out to achieve come out and spoil things and get a you know get a clean sheet and it was working beautifully but no he switched to a 4-2-3-1 with Jeffrey on the left hand side he did make a similar change in their last match they <laughs> were lacking creativity at Maidstone and he brought on two wingers Jeffrey and Modest and they snatched a late winner exactly the same pattern was followed here today I wondered whether because he was away to a promotion chasing side whether he wouldn't uh, go so bold and would be satisfied just to be restricting Wrexham but no he went for it and he would be rewarded oh I've got to be honest until the 88 minute winner from Jeffrey it looked like a, a decision where we have ridden his luck a touch because the game did open up a bit more. It still wasn't a, the most beautiful spectacle, but it did open up more. There were more chances, and they pretty much all fell to Wrexham as the game became more stretched and Wrexham's creative players were able to find a bit more space to operate. And they had a goal, and goal in the first minute of the second half, a cross coming in from the left-hand side by Rutherford. Summerfield lunging at it, couldn't control his header and put it over the bar. And they continued to, to make little chances. Grants on the right flank, spinning and playing a tremendous drilled diagonal, trying to put Rutherford in one-on-one. -on -one. It was a fraction over hit and the keeper just managed to beat Rutherford to it on the edge of the box. It bounced off him. He, did, he failed to take it cleanly and and the keeper did well to improvise, get up and chase it out of the box and smash it into the seats before Wrexham player could get onto the loose ball. Then it was Rutherford finding Ben Tollett, who had come on uh, to replace Bevan. And again, he and Rutherford were combining well. Tollett picking up Rutherford shot from 20 yards out and hitting a good snapshot across the keeper, who dived down low to his left to hold on to it. 
Then Grant getting involved through the middle. He'd switched into the middle after Todd had came on. Back to goal in a crowded penalty area. He did ever so well to juggle and control the ball. There was a reasonable shout for at least an indirect free kick, if not something more in the box, as a defender lunged in with a very high boot, trying to dispossess and waving the boot in Grant's face. Didn't make contact. Referee just carried on with play. Grant carried on driving deep into the goal mouth. When the ball came out at the edge of the area, Summerfield drilled a shot from 18 yards. The keeper was unsighted to the last moment and did well to just raised his hands up slightly to his right at head height and parried the ball away if it had been anywhere else pretty much the keeper wouldn't have seen it and it probably would have been a goal as halfway through the half <laughs> Dover managed to eke out their one other chance apart from the goal in all honesty Jeffrey doing well to get round the back again and beating Roberts pulling it back to Effiong six yards out luckily for Wrexham his touch was poor in a crowded goal mouth Summerfield under his own bar was able to dispossess him and poke it wide still Wrexham struggled to clear it but ultimately Rutherford went in with a very brave clear to draw a foul in the penalty area and end the pressure but that was very much against the run of play and in fact moments later Wrexham's second associate Akeel Wright who'd come on as a like for like change for Young had a chance to, to clinch it a great flick from a Lainton kick by Grant and right running down the left channel was one on one with the keeper he drove to the edge of the area tried to hit it across the goalie but although he got some power on it he wasn't able to get direction and Walker got down low to his left to push the ball away Wrexham continued to push on Tollett 25 yards, yards out driving a shot which clearly took a deflection keeper going low down may have got a touch onto it as well the referee inexplicably gave a goal kick uh, not the first time he made uh, that sort of call and those sorts of decisions. And Pearson, livid in his descent, got himself a yellow card, which meant that three minutes later, with ten minutes left on the clock, he couldn't uh, throw his full weight into his uh, maybe... Um, oh, certainly more important opportunity to show a bit of descent a bizarre incident Wrexham with a free kick on the left flank about 25 yards out Summerfield overhit it uh, beyond the far post Pearson was the man on the far post Pearson turned to chase it and keep it in and then decided he couldn't and stopped then suddenly realised that he could but before he could ch go set off in pursuit the centre-back Kevin Locker ran across and shoved him to my eyes blatantly in the back with both hands clear penalty Referee didn't give it. Lines won a clear sight of it. It was on that side of the pitch. He didn't give it either. And Pearson, as I said, had to, had to sort of control his descent as he'd been booked for arguing with the referee three minutes earlier. Wrexham then made a third change, and it was a big one. And, well, with hindsight, maybe might have cost us Brad Walker coming off. Uh, in order to change things around even further, Holroyd came on up front and well, Wrexham pulled Rutherford back into midfield but it was the absence of Walker which might have been costly for Wrexham totally understand why the bench did this Wrexham wanted the win desperately so bringing off a more defensive player to put on another attacking option was, was logical perfectly logical however Wrexham maybe just lacked Walker's control at the back of the midfield and in front of the back four because there was a, a spell of play where Wrexham really struggled to get to release the pressure they were penned in for a good couple of minutes into their penalty area and it ended disastrously for them as the ball was worked out wide by Naughty again it was Wrexham struggling to get the ball clear it was half cleared Colroyd beaten to it bravely by Naughty the Dover bench were all shouting for a foul by Holroyd on the midfielder but they soon weren't because the ball found its way out to the left flank to Jeffrey, who'd been tormenting Roberts. He cut inside, beat him, and drove a superb shot across Leington and inside the right post for what would turn out to be the, wither, the winner. Wrexham tried to gather themselves and hurl the ball forwards, but really couldn't get much momentum going at all. They had one last opportunity, Tollis with a good burst, hitting the goal line on the left-hand side, driving it across the face of goal. No Wrexham player could get a touch on it, and beyond the far post, De Bayo, with all the time in the world and no one anywhere near him, inexplicably side-footed it back towards his own goal and trying to put it behind for a corner and stick it in the side netting, nearly a, a bizarre own goal. But uh, although it would have been a very gratefully received contribution, the honest truth of the matter is that Wrexham couldn't complain about the outcome because Dover has defended so grittily and then restricted Wrexham's opportunities to carve out clear-cut chances. A really good uh, tactical approach by Hessen Thaler, reside executed his game plan to perfection. Wrexham certainly had a case complaining about the penalty shouts, but didn't create all that much. Uh, the defence was solid. It looked like a clean sheet all day long until that happened. Although Roberts did have, as I said, some, some issues with Jeffrey. 
Jennings got forwards well on our left. The two centre backs were, were strong and competitive, especially up against the big F Young and Pavey in the first half. In midfield, Walker did a steady job with again some misplaced passes. Summerfield grew into the game more as it got, as it got stretched. So in the second half, Summerfield was able to influence things much more, uh, playing the ball forwards. And Rutherford was just non-stop energy on the flanks. Tollett looked lively when he came on. Uh, it was a frustrating day for Grant, perhaps, who I felt in the first half when it was so tight. It was more his sort of game, the sort of match where he was fighting. What space there was was out wide, and that maybe when he started off on the right, he could maybe come inside and let off some shots in his left foot, but he never quite managed to get his game going and do so. And maybe that just epitomised the frustration for Wrexham. Uh, tough, tough day against a, a well-drilled side. And like I said, that's two games in a row now where sides are defended deeper, defended narrow, and Rexmo just lacks maybe that focal point up front or that creative spark to, to find a breakthrough. For further analysis of the game, have a listen to what myself, Lucy Scott, and Lee Milford thought of it on Calon FM. This is the Final Whistle Podcast from the Wrexham AFC media team. Well, huge disappointment for Wrexham, a home defeat, only the second home defeat of the season. Uh, but Dover Athletic did what I said in the tin, they came out, they spoiled, they fought hard. And then, I say that to be fairly, at half-time, they've made a bold change, they've brought on a winger, they did this in their last match when they won at Maidstone. They've opened up their formation a little bit, they still kept us fairly tight at the back. And, well, frankly, Anthony Jeffrey was the best player on the pitch and scored a great goal to decide it. He certainly was. He was the one bit of quality on that pitch today. To be honest, it was a from a Wrexham point of view, it was a poor game all over the all over the pitch. To be honest, Roberts had a, a terrible game. Looked like he picked up a bad injury there at the end as well, limping for the last five sort of minutes. But at the end of the day, you've got to give credit to the opposition. You know, they've come here in previous games. They've beat Fylde at home. They've drew nil nil with Leighton Orient at home, and now they've come away to Wrexham and picked up three points. Um, yeah, it's a frustrating one to take that one, but at the same, you've got to give credit to the opposition where it's due. I think you're absolutely right, Andy Hessendahl's done a superb job, clearly, in turning around the side. It were a drift at the bottom of the table not so long ago. They've done it turned full time, as you alluded to earlier as well, and uh, they really look extremely well organised. Robert's injury, by the way, came when Effion was was wasting time by the corner flag, but then things opened up, so he cut in and tried a shot, and Robert stuck a leg out to block it, and I think it just overextended his ankle as he blocked it with his foot. Uh, he's able to get through but uh, yeah, he's limping off at the end but he hasn't a happy time of it which leads me Lucy to ask you what, well hindsight's a wonderful thing but I guess okay maybe Carrington for right, staying in the side at right back who knows how you might have dealt with Jeffrey but also we, we maybe lost control of the middle of the pitch when we went for broke and took off Walker to go for a more attacking midfield because we were really trying to take the game to them perhaps yeah and it was a positive positive substitution positive change but yeah I think you're right I think I think um, the ball wasn't sticking as much and we were I mean Holroyd wasn't on that long to be honest he's only on a few minutes before the goal actually came but um, again as uh, Lee said you know the Jeffrey was the best player on the pitch and he only played a half and um, and yeah it was a brilliant finish we had a great angle of it and it was a brilliant finish but um, keeping around that aren't they? Yeah, seems to still be stuff going on on the pitch, doesn't there, in terms of their players but, um, and the stewards. But um, again, I think Lee said earlier, it just kind of capping an, an overall poor before, uh, a poor day all, all round, really. Yeah, this is a strange pantomime going on. There was a bit of unhappiness about Jeffrey's celebration <laughs> and the, the dugout's reaction to it. And there's something weird going on now where some of the um, Dover players unused subs and Modest who came on later have gone for a warm down and it's really upset the stadium staff uh, who I think Modest was having words when we had this squirmish in front of us I think he was involved in that somehow I think at the end those fans were telling that him what they thought and he was provoking them I think so I think that's why the, the stewards have said well why are you going over there as though he's going to the Mold Road stand All right, so to speak to fans whereas he, he's cooling down it was a very half-hearted warm down because they, they've basically run the length of the pitch now they're <laughs> going to walk off again it was, it was a strange little pantomime anyway let's stick to the football rather than that <laughs> oh, actually maybe not I mean just remember what the football was like it was a it was just tough from the outset wasn't it though we were so organised and it was a bit like the Salford game in the sense that they had it narrow and we just lacked the the creativity to really break them down didn't we and maybe that focal point up front 
Yeah, there a real lack of quality from Wrexham today, all, all over the park really, to be honest. There was no sort of, I can't really think of too many chances that were created. There was one from Tollett, and apart from that, I can't really think of too many more. Um, the passing throughout was poor, there was no sort of, I don't know whether it was tiredness maybe creeping into the team from over the festive period, but then you've got to think Dover have been through the same sort of thing, so... Can we put it down to that? Can we put it down to complacency at home, maybe? You know, we beat Salford here, we beat Solihull. Maybe they thought Dover we should be beating. I, I don't know. It's a it's a frustrating, disappointing afternoon for Wrexham. I do, I do think, though, I think you hit the nail on the head the first time as well, saying credit to Dover. Well organised, made it extremely difficult. And Wrexham found it hard to break them down, didn't they, really, in all honesty? But it was... Uh, <laughs> I'll buy you a short amount of thinking space for that man of the match call because that's a tricky one today. I've got a thought in my head. I've got a rescue call if you really need it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it's it's, it's now our rest. We have not managed to bounce back from the Salford game with a win. No, no, it's crucial now that we don't let this become a pattern. We need to get back on winning terms quickly, Lucy. Yeah, we do definitely just to keep within touch touch of those top two, um, and obviously the teams below us as well will be hot on our heels um, and I do I do just I don't know whether it's complacency today that they have played a, a lot of games in a, in a short amount of time for me probably the changes that Barrow did make I probably would have made different changes I mean well, I'm not a manager but I, I you know I do think that Tollett and um, Horroy perhaps if they were given I know Tollett had most of a half but I think if they'd have been given an opportunity for longer it, it may have it may have produced something but again though overall our quality you know our first touches were pretty poor uh, you know but even after all saying all of that there were two great balls into yeah, the box yeah. and we actually could have if we just scored both of them one two you know one two one if you put it in that context so even at even one nil down okay all right great ball great ball in but at one nil down why aren't more players in that box yeah, maybe so. Fair point. Right, Lee, man of the match. It's uh, we're short of time. We've got 30 seconds till we go off air. What's your thought thinking? Well, it's a tough one, isn't it, for all of them? I'm, I'm interested to hear what yours is. I, if I was going to choose one today, I'd probably choose Jake Laura for me. Oh, I was um, thinking Rutherford for work rate, but actually Lawler defended very well. That's a, that's a very good call. Lawler, I think that's a I think that's a sensible call. It's a tough one today, isn't it? It is a tough one today. Wrexham worked hard, no question about that, but Dover's game plan was exceptionally effective and as a result they frustrated us with a final score. This is the Final Whistle Podcast from the Wrexham AFC media team.